All right, guys, so welcome back. Uh, this is Kevin again with Yorker Racing. We're back in the garage again. Uh, today, picking up where we left off again on the LT1 short block. Kind of had a big whoops yesterday. Um, unfortunately, went to put in the number two piston and one of the oil rings somehow or another got turned inside the cylinder bore. Um, I'm sure it's something that I didn't quite have it lined up just right or, or whatever for whatever reason it did it and it actually kind of dug into the cylinder wall just a hair and it put a pretty bad um, scuff mark coming back up out of the cylinder where it kind of wanted to try to hang up uh, unfortunately there was nothing I could really do other than just knock it back up through there so anyway um, pretty bummed out yesterday had some time to kind of Think about what I want to try to do with it. Um, I'm going to just run this hone through it a couple of times and see. I think it's not very deep, I don't think. I ran the dial bore gauge down in it, and it really doesn't seem to be too deep. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I won't have to pull much out of it. Um, it wouldn't take, it's not going to take a whole lot to come out of this cylinder before it's going to kind of be past the point of uh, needing to go to bigger pistons in it. So. Anyway, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to throw you guys up here and let you kind of see what I'm talking about. And uh, fingers crossed, man, this thing will work out for us because I'm really not trying to go back into the process of getting bigger pistons, a different rotating assembly and all that because I don't think it's worth it to balance um, new pistons to this crank and rod set. So not for what we're trying to do. At that point, we'll just jump up to something different. But for now, we're going to try to hone it. Um, hopefully it'll work. Let's get to it. All right, so that is the damage, guys. Um, again, not what we were looking for. Um, hopefully, like I said, it, it's more of a scuff than, than anything, but on each side of it, it does have two pretty decent sized scratches. So, like I said, I'm going to take the home, run it down in there a couple times. Hopefully, I can knock it out of there without taking too much material off. But uh, you know, only time will tell how that's going to really go. So we're going to get started with that process. And fingers crossed, like I said, it'll work out. So let's jump in. So we're getting closer. I've almost got the one side all the way out. And so far, we haven't really, uh, according to the dial board gauge, we hadn't put really any, a whole lot of extra size into it. Like I said, I don't think the scratches were deep at all. I think it was just mostly a kind of cosmetic deal. Um, I do know there was two little spots in there. Um, that were pretty, that were like took the edges of the ring or something where it folded around the edge. So those two little spots, for whatever reason, when they locked right in that spot, um, those two seem to be the worst. Hopefully I can get those all the way out. That's the main concern. If I get those all the way out before we, uh, before we get too big, we'll be in good shape. Uh, just putting a little bit more more pressure on the uh, spring here put a little bit more outward pressure on the feet of this tool I'll uh, just try to help it along a little bit Still only about 1.3, 1.4 thousandths over the uh, four inch bore. So that would honestly, that 
that would put us in spec. So hopefully it will stay pretty close to that. It's starting to come out though. The one side you can barely see at all anymore. This other side over here. Still got a little ways to go. I'll bring it in and show you again. Hopefully you guys can see what we're dealing with. Like I said, it's starting to come in. guys so bring it back in for another shot here kind of let you see where we're at now hopefully you guys can see that but most of it is now gone um, I'm gonna make a couple more passes through there um, pretty happy with the way it's turning out um, we're still within specs on the cylinder so should be good to go there. Um, just like I said, we're just gonna keep plugging away at it. Probably gonna hang it up for tonight. Come back out, do it again tomorrow. Uh, it's getting pretty late now. Been at it for for a little bit, taking a little bit longer to to work this stuff out of there than what I thought it would. So, like I said, we're gonna uh, we're probably gonna wrap it up for tonight, and then bring you guys back again tomorrow to uh, finish it out. Just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself Alright guys, so after I honed the number two cylinder out Got it where I wanted it As far as the scratches that were in it Got those out 
Then I pulled the crank and all the main bearings back out, cleaned everything up again, and then I threw that back in and got it back ready where we were at before. Um, one thing I did was order one of these uh, Summit Racing tapered um, piston ring compressors. Um, so I just tried it out the first time here on this cylinder. And man, it went in just like butter. So not really sure if I was just more careful that time with the rings, setting those up and making sure we had them where nothing was going to be in the way. Um, thought I was being pretty thorough the first time. So honestly, at this point, I'm thinking it was just the fact that I didn't use the compressor the correct way. Um, I borrowed the compressor from... Uh, my cousin and he was telling me that if you actually start it up to the top of that OTC compressor That the bottom of it will kind of pull in and taper in a little bit and fit inside the hole just barely um, And then it'll actually try to compress it as it goes down So it's probably just a deal where I didn't really use the compressor the correct way um, The only other ones I've ever used were like the regular um, ratchet real cheap style ones so I'm not really sure on that one, um, if that's what happened or what. I'm, I'm guessing I just used it wrong because, I mean, I know he set up motors with it in the past and not had an issue with it. But from everything I could find online, these tapered style compressors were supposed to be the best, um, easiest to use, I guess. And like I said, the first one went in like butter. So hopefully uh, the same will go for the rest of them. We'll be in good shape. And then I can just order two more of the oil rails. And we'll be good to go for the, for the rest of the install. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like below and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.